Is that unfair to that gun? You can. I can't argue with the fact that you can do it, but I'm always trying to find the solution. And this, there are a couple of solutions to the points that they're trying to make here that Darwin Core can handle. And the interesting thing is now that we've entered into a realm of norms for a community and how you want to do it, since there is more than one way to do it. So one way is to take your primary collector and put it in recorded by and not put the others there. Put them somewhere else and put that primary collector's number in record number and put the other numbers, if they exist, somewhere else. But that's not the only way. Another way might be, let's fill the recorded by field with a list of all the collectors and make sure the primary one is first. Another is, let's do that and not trust that it's enough to have it be first on the list. Put the name and in parentheses put primary after the name, and then put the others. But these are norms that you have to decide as a community so that they make sense to the other people who get the data. Right? They all fit the idea of what the recorded by term should be, a list of collectors. But you need to, under, need to have an idea of how you want to share the content of that field. No? One second. <laughs> okay, who determines what? I'm uh, saying who determines the essential information that is supposed to be fed into the Darwin code. Who determines it? Says so you're saying you can leave some out and then you can fix some in. So who right, it? right. Question is who determines what should be fed into the Darwin core? And here's the point that I was trying to make. The Darwin core is a global standard that's supposed to apply to botany as well as it does to entomology as well as it does to bird observations. But all those communities have different customs and different ideas about what's important. Now, botany community is huge and strong and has very well defined customs. But unless there is some document that says for botany you should do this for the recorded by field, then it will be a little bit ambiguous. Now, there are ways to do that. There are ways to do that in the Darwin Core documentation or outside of it. And in fact, there has been an exercise called Apple Core, <laughs> which is supposed to be commentary on how to use Darwin Core for botany. And I can show that if we have an internet connection. So it's the community of botanists got together, some subset of them, to say, okay, listen, let's do it this way and let that be the guide. And each community should do such a thing. Because Darwin Core is so broad is that, that there may be conflicts across communities. So that has been done for botany only? There is one for botany, yeah. Yeah. In zoology, there has not been a, a description of um, norms, let's say, for how to fill Darwin Core. It's something that ought to be done. <laughs> Bunch of questions, this is great. Um, what's the difference between the Darwin Core and then Brahms? Brahms. Brahms is a database. It has its own structure. Darwin Core is a set of terms and the definition of those terms. And a few guides about how to share using either text or XML or RDF, different kinds of formatting for those data. But it's not a database. There is no Darwin Core database. Okay, so then can you, can you transfer data from the Brahms into Darwin, Darwin Core. Core, yes, okay. by going through an exercise exactly like the one we're doing now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great questions. Any others? I can see we've hit close to home. <laughs> hmm? um, I can. I'm not sure that that's relevant to the question they had anymore, but I'll try to find Apple Core quickly. Is this a commentary while we're waiting? 
Apple Corp hotels done? Little advertising. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get the Apple Corp site to come up, but while it's doing so, I wanted to show you something else that is related. Yes. From the Darwin Core Quick Reference Guide, if I select a term from the index and go look at its details, the comments give an example. So here's an example. Oliver P. Pearson, semicolon, Anita K. Pearson. So there's a model. We know that those are two people. It doesn't tell us anything about the question that we were just talking about, which one is primary and so on. Now, where the value in record number is this value. Okay, this is the example. Corresponds to the number for the specimen in the field catalog, or the collector number, of Oliver P. Pearson. Okay? So we've done basically what was described. We put our first collector, the one who had the collector number, in the first position. But the definition is not telling you that you have to do that. Now, to find anything else that the community might have said about how to use that record recorded by in general, there's always a link on the term. You can see every one of them has a link that goes to a page that has more information about, or might have more information about how to use that term. So I've clicked on that link, and now I've taken to a page that has a list of Darwin core terms that are in the occurrence class. And I go to recorded by, and here I get some more information. Let me see if I can make that bigger. Recorded by. So for observations, all right, we're out of specimens now. The observation community had a little bit to say about it. For observations, this is the equivalent of the observer or observers. Now. For specimens, this is the equivalent of the name of a collector or list of names of collectors. If there's more than one person or any other collecting agent associated with a specimen, the one whose record number is recorded should appear first in the list. So that's partly what we're talking about. Somebody has already noted that that should be a norm. They haven't said that this is for botany, but it's in general. Okay. I'd like to show you Apple Core, but I'm not certain that we can get to it. Apple Core, yes, we can. So this is a site where a group of folks, some of whom are listed here, got together and said, we need some norms for botany. Here's their introduction, and here are their guidelines. And they have a list of terms and what should be in those terms. Actually, they're just basic concepts rather than the terms. So let's go see what they say about collectors. The terms for collector are recorded by. That's what you use. Now, there's actually a recommended authority file for botany that you should use the Harvard Index of Botanist database for the names that go into that field. So they've been quite specific in this case about what the content of the field should be. The reason for that is, I suppose, that you don't confuse two people with the same name. Now, they say that this is a recommended field. And they say you should provide as much defect detail as possible. And here are examples. Last name, first name, title. That that's how these names might appear. I don't know what else they say, but let's go down. Looks like a pretty long page. Here's an alternative using a standard or label name that it should appear in this way. How to express collecting teams. Okay, so they've actually done a pretty good job of describing this exact problem and what should be done about it for botany. So that's the idea. Information from specific communities that come together to add more um, guidance about how to use the Darwin Core for a specific case. 
But this is the best developed of those guidelines that exist right now. And it's a good model. Other questions? So we didn't actually get very far in terms of doing the mappings, but we got far enough to see that it's not easy, necessarily. Some of it's easy, some of it's not. And the exercise for the, for the afternoon will be to take a real data set that's in your folders and try to do, it's actually that same data set, try to do the mapping of all the original fields into Darwin Core fields. And to make note of where there are problems. So, Town, you mentioned something about time. Do we need to break? Yeah.